In this video, we talk at a quantitative level about the acid-base properties of amphoteric substances. All right, amphoteric substances are uh, species that can behave as either acids or bases. All right, so a question would be, well, if, if they can behave as either, which one do they behave uh, as at a particular set of circumstances? Will they be acids? Will they be bases? What controls that? All right, so we're going to uh, discuss those topics uh, using bicarbonate or halium carbonate our, uh, as our exemplar amphoteric substance. All right, we've already talked about bicarbonate in prior videos. Uh, uh, this is where uh, bicarbonate is involved. This is just the uh, acid dissociation of carbonic acid. Where we have that the first proton uh, is dissociated according to this uh, process. That will be the first acid dissociation constant that generates halium carbonate or bicarbonate. And then bicarbonate uh, uh, can undergo a second dissociation uh, to generate carbonate ions and then protons. That will uh, be dictated by a, a equilibrium constant K2A2, so and those are the values of K1, K1, K2. All right, in, in this video, we ask the question of, well, uh, uh, let's talk about the, the uh, acid base properties of bicarbonate. The acid properties are actually already here. That is, in this second equilibrium of carbonic acid, you have bicarbonate acting as an acid, all right? And, and we actually have the equilibrium constant for that process, K is way two, which is 4.810 to the minus 11. Now the question is, well, what about the base properties of bicarbonate? Well, uh, notice that it will have base properties, bicarbonate will have base properties, because it is the conjugate base of a weak acid, right? Because it's a conjugate base of a weak acid, it will have uh, sizable uh, base properties. The question is, well, how do we quantify those and how do they compare to the acid properties right, of bicarbonate? All right, so for a conjugate base, uh, what's going to happen is as follows. Right, you take the conjugate base and then you put it in water, and what will happen is that uh, this bicarbonate will act as a base. Right, so you can uh, accept a proton to generate carbonic acid, and then uh, you will generate hydroxide. Right, so that is why it's a base, it produces hydroxide in water uh, uh, after accepting a proton up from water. Right, so that is the uh, acid uh, equation for uh, hydrogen carbonate. This is the base uh, reactivity for hydrogen carbonate. The question is which one uh, predominates. Well, we have the equilibrium constant value for uh, the acid uh, equilibrium. The question is, well, what would be the equilibrium constant for the base equilibrium? Uh, uh, Comparison of the acid and base equilibrium constants then will tell us uh, which one is more important. All right, so uh, to calculate the equilibrium constant for this base uh, process, what we actually have to do is just write what that would look like. Right, this is what we call K sub B, and notice that that is going to be the concentration of carbonic acid, H2CO3, at equilibrium multiplied by the concentration of hydroxide, at equilibrium divided over the concentration of bicarbonate at equilibrium. Right, so we don't have this directly, but uh, notice that if we multiply this by concentration of protons in the numerator and in the denominator, then we have something uh, that, that um, uh, is meaningful. Notice that what we have right here, this is the inverse of our K sub A1. Right, so notice that in the denominator here you have bicarbonate multiplied by protons, which is the numerator of this expression, and then uh, carbonic acid, which is the denominator. Right, so we know that that piece of our K sub B is K sub A, and then uh, the remaining piece, which is this, that is just uh, the auto dissociation uh, equilibrium constant for water. Okay, so then uh, we can actually uh, use those two numbers and, and calculate this. This is 1 10 to the minus 14, that is 4.3 10 to the minus 7, Right, so uh, when we calculate this, that happens to be 2.3, 10 to the minus 8. Okay, so now we're ready to establish a comparison between uh, the acid properties of bicarbonate and the basic properties uh, of bicarbonate. The uh, acid equilibrium dissociation uh, has an equilibrium constant of 10 to the minus 11, and then the base uh, uh, process has an equilibrium constant of uh, 10 to the minus 8. Clearly, uh, the basic uh, equilibrium constant is much greater than that uh, of the acid properties by about three orders of magnitude or so. So what will happen when you put bicarbonate in, in water 
is that uh, it will uh, uh, the base properties will dominate and you will get uh, you will get a, a basic pH, right? So so that's that's how you determine for an alphateric substance that can behave as either an acid or a base, which one is more important. You simply take a look at the equilibrium constants and see which one dominates. Now, something quite important is that you can actually control to a great extent whether uh, that alphateric substance behaves as an acid or as a base by simply changing the conditions, right? So again, we, so we have that uh, a bicarbonate. If, if you don't do anything to the conditions, simply put it in water, uh, the basic properties will dominate. However, you can make it behave as, as an acid very simply. Right? One of the things that you can do is say, well, uh, I'm going to try to displace this equilibrium to the right. Okay, I'm going to try to make uh, bicarbonate behave as a, as a base. So there's a couple of things that you can do. For one, you could precipitate carbonate. Okay, and for another one, you can precipitate or you can uh, add a base to remove uh, uh, the protons that you have in solution, right? If you make either of uh, these two uh, products very small, then you will displace the equilibrium to the right, and what that would, will mean is that uh, uh, you will be um, enhancing uh, uh, the acid properties of bicarbonate, right? So yes, while bicarbonate tends to be a base, if you are already in very basic conditions, then it will actually behave as an acid, okay? Uh, so again, notice that uh, this is very uh, useful uh, to have these amphoteric substances whose properties you can control based on uh, uh, the conditions in which you're carrying your experiment. Right, to summarize this video, we have seen uh, how to quantify uh, amphoteric substances, the acid-base behavior of amphoteric substances, and how you can determine based on the conditions whether uh, that substance will behave as an acid or as a base.